This video is all about determining the slope of a line on a graph. And the slope is a way that we can describe how steep this line is. How quickly is it rising? So for every uh, one step we take to the right, how many steps up are we going? So that is how we can describe it. If it's a really steep line, we'll take one step to the right and take many steps upward. If it's a really gently sloping line, we would have to take many steps to the right before we have to go up one. And so that's how we can describe the, st the steepness or the slope of the line. So to do that, we're going to get the rise over the run. How much it goes up is the rise up or down, in this case up, and the run is how much it's moving side to side. Whenever I'm calculating slope, I always look at the line from left to right. So I always think of the run as going to the right. You don't have to think of it that way, but just for consistency's sake, I always describe run as always going to the right. So I'm looking at this line like I'm looking at a sentence from left to right, which would be up here. So how do we describe that? We want to find some points on this line and then see from one point to the next how much we go up and how much we go to the right. And you can pick any two points on the line that you want. It doesn't matter where. They could be decimals or integers or anything like that. The coordinates of the points could be. But I think it's easiest if you find points that have integer coordinates. And what I mean by that is these would be places where the line, this in this case this green line, is hitting the graph paper where the graph paper grid lines meet. For example, right here is a nice convenient spot. So the up and down, the vertical lines of the graph paper and the horizontal line of the graph paper meet on the green line that we're looking at. So that right there is not a really convenient place to look. That's not very convenient. But here's another one. That's a good one to look at. Not, those aren't very good, but there's a good spot. Those are not convenient, but that's a good one, and there's another good one. So, which two points do you compare? You've got, looks like, five different choices on this line. It turns out it doesn't really matter. You can choose any two points. And to, so I will show you why that is. Let's just pick these two points here. So let's get the rise and the run. As we're going from left to right, going this way, how much are we going up, what's the rise, and how much are we going to the right, that's the run. So these answers are always going to be uh, in fractions. You can think of them as fractions, I should say. They don't always have to be fractions, but it's really convenient to think of them as fractions, how much you're going up or down, how much you're going to the right. So from this point to this point, I'm going up one, two, three. So my rise is 3. So if I'm writing out the slope, I've got the 3 on top. The 3 is my rise. And I'm going 1 to the right. So my run is 1. So this is rise 3, run 1. And so the slope is 3 over 1. And you could just describe that, oops, you could just describe that as a 3. 3 over 1, of course, is just 3. But what does that mean? That means we're going up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1 every time. So from this point, we're going up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. So that is the slope of the line. What if I had chosen two different points? Would that still give me the same slope? Let's try. This time, let's pick the two farthest points apart and see if the slope is still 3. So if I'm going to start on the left. I'm going to go to the point on the right. I'm going to start by going up. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So my rise is 12, so rise is 12, 12 over, what's my run? 
I'm going to the right now, one, two, three, four. My run is four. It's a 12 over four. Up 12, right four. Up 12, right four. But whenever you're writing these uh, slope fractions, rise over run, you always want to simplify. You want to reduce to lowest terms. So what is 12 over four? Well, the biggest number that goes into both is a three. 12, uh, three goes into 12, I'm sorry, the biggest number that goes into both is a 4. I should get that right if I'm going to record a video. The biggest number that goes into both is a 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 goes into 4 one time. So we end up with the same answer as we had before, 3 over 1, or just 3. So it doesn't matter what points you pick on the line, as long as you get the rise over the run and then reduce that to lowest terms, you'll always get the same answer. Let's look at one more quick example here. This one has a little twist to it. So first, let's pick some convenient points on the line. So I would say there's one there and no, 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 that's a good one there. And if I want to get the rise over the run, in this case, I'm still going from left to right, but instead of going up and to the right, this time I'm going down and to the right. And anytime you're going down, that's going to be negative. So my rise is a negative 2. Negative 2 for my rise. What's the run? The run is to the right. 1, 2, 3. So my run is 3 to the right. And that's negative 2 over 3. That's already reduced to lowest terms. So there's my slope. And this one is negative because the line is going down and to the right. So down and to the right is going to be a negative slope. In this example, up and to the right is a positive slope. And in this example here, I could just keep going. And you can see that this is going to be every time down to right 3, down to right 3, down to right 3, and we could just keep on going. It has that consistent slope. And in this case, because it's down and to the right, you got to make sure you have that negative sign there. So I hope that helps, and good luck.